Okay, so to assemble the bag, before I start that, I want to mention that you can decorate the front and back piece of the body of the bag. I have lots of tutorials where I've put pockets on, I've kind of patched in some pretty fabrics and trims, added flowers, things like that. But I left these alone because this is one of my favorite fabrics of all time and I want the beauty to just sort of stand alone. And that's why I didn't add a bunch to the body of the bag except for this little fringe cluster and brooch. But what I do first here is I go back to the flap that we made and the back piece of the purse. Now, I took a ruler and found the center of this piece. So, and that's right there. And I made a little black mark with my marker. You can stick a pin in if you don't want to mark on your fabric. And then on the back of the flap, I measured and found the center. So it's four inches approximately right here where the fabric is. I'm not counting the trim. So then I got a mark two, which is the center of that. So now that I have my two centers marked, I need to pin this flap right sides together on the back because when it flips over, it will flip over the front on the correct side. So basically you put right sides together, you line up those two marks that you made, and I always stick a pin right there first so it doesn't shift around. I know it's exactly in the center. And then this is a short one, so I'll only stick one more pin on each side. Sometimes my flaps are almost as big as the bag, so I stick a couple more pins in. And then I just go to my machine. Let me get this in. And with a quarter inch seam allowance, I sew across that flap. The, any fringe or trim that the flap has, I sew right across that as well. So a quarter inch seam allowance, I'll sew right across that flap so that it's sewn to the back of the bag. And then I'll go over it again. I'll go over it twice just to make sure it's extra durable. Okay, so now I have that flap sewn on. And what I need to do is just go over to my ironing board and press this. So I just lay this out like this. And I'm going to put my tea towel over top to protect my fabric. And I'm going to give this a good press. And then I'm going to fold it over like this, right on that seam. And lay my tea towel over top of it. And give it a good press right at that seam right here. So that's what it's looking like. We have the velvet on the back and the flap right there for now. Okay, so now I want to put these two pieces together. And the first thing I need to do is tuck in all this fringe so that I can find the edge of my fabric and sew. So I usually just tuck it sort of inside and up towards the top because we won't be sewing the top right now. So it's okay if it extends past this top section. I just want this rounded part of the bag free and clear of fringe, loose fringe. Okay. I'm going to take a second and straighten that out nicely, and then I'm going to come back. I don't want to mess it up now. Okay, 
So I have it kind of laying sideways here. Here's the top. I have the fringe all tucked up. Now I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to open the flap and kind of get it out of the way. Now I want to put right sides together. Now this is the front with all this fringe. That's the right side. And then this pretty fabric velvet is the right side. And I need to put those together on top of one another. Line them up. And the flap right now, just ignored. I won't pin anything across the top. I'm going to pin starting up here all the way around. Now, if you have a lot of suede or leather, you may bend some pins at this point, but oh well. Just try to pin in between like difficult chunks, but it's doable as long as you don't have anything too too thick or too hard. Okay, so I'm going to go on the other side. I like to get start over here and then come to the opposite opposite side because that's important that that lines up. So I'm going to pin that. And then I'll just work my way all the way around and get this whole thing pinned. While I'm pinning this, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a question I get asked all the time. And you can just skip this if you want, if you just want to see what the next step is in the bag. But a lot of people ask me about how do you price your upcycled items? How do I price my upcycled items? What would you list this for? Well, I'm terrible at responding and I get a lot of requests to do a video on pricing and all of that. Well, I'm not trying to gatekeep. I just truly don't have a really good answer until the very last thing I sold. It's a, it's a challenge for me. You know, you want to make it worth your while. Why do it and sell it if it's, you're not going to profit. So you want to price it high enough, but yet you don't want to price yourself out of the market where nobody's going to buy your items. But that is just a question. It's so difficult for me to answer for you because I don't know where you're selling. I don't know who you're selling to. I really don't even know the market these days. So I don't know what material materials you're using. I don't know how long it took you. I don't know quality. So it is almost impossible for me to answer that question. Time and material, I mean, make it worth your while. Do some research and go to Etsy or wherever you're selling. What are people selling them for? What are they asking? Are they actually selling? May, you know, it's gotta be worth your while. Um, so my bag sold for hundreds, you know, I, but I sold on eBay. I started selling on eBay and then I went to Etsy after that. eBay was kind of was having difficulty with like slow payment and things like that. So I switched platforms, but that is why I started on eBay and I'm not suggesting you do. I'm just saying I was chicken. The very first bag I put online, I didn't know what to price it at. And I was, I wanted it to sell, I wanted it to sell for hundreds, but I didn't want to ask that because it was my very first bag, but I didn't want to give it away, but I was willing to almost give it away to get my name out there and get people interested in kind of making bids. I sold it as an auction. I listed it for $79, which was it was almost advertising for me. I wanted to get my name out there and it sold at auction for 119. Well, I knew people would at least pay 119. And so I did that because I was scared to price. So I know it's difficult, but just kind of do your market research, know what you're worth, don't give them away, but maybe the first couple to get your name out there, I don't know. A lot of people may disagree, but I went lower. I almost chalked it off as marketing and kind of gave it away. But okay, that's what I have to say about that. So on to the next. Okay, so everything's pinned and I'm just going to take it to my machine and sew it. And what I'm going to do 
is start at the very top. Quarter inch seam allowance will be my goal. And I will just sew all the way around to the opposite side on the top, leaving the top open. And then when I'm done with that, I'll go back and sew it again so it's double stitch. Now I have a denim needle and I'm going to go nice and slow. My needle or my machine gets through this, but you don't want to go fast. You don't want to break needles. Just take your time and get that sewn around. Okay. Now I have this all sewn and I'm going to do two things before I turn this right side out. I'm just going to trim off some extra here that's protruding way too much. Get that cleaned up. And then I'm just going, just like we did the flat, go around and make those notches. Just about, on this one I'll go about every inch close to but not through the stitch you just made and that'll just help it lay nice and flat when you turn it right side out. Okay, now time to turn it inside out. Real quick here, another question I get a lot is how long does it take you, did it take you to make these bags when you sold? Well, a bag like this I could easily make in one day some of my more elaborate ones I could make in a day, but it'd be a really long day. But then it would take the next day to take pictures for listing and measurements and do the actual listing. So, okay. Okay, so here's what it's looking like right side out. So fun. Now I'm going to take it to my ironing board and just press those seams that I just sewed. Boy, on the camera here, this really reads orange. It has a lot of pink and just kind of mauvey pinks in it, but it's not really showing up. Okay, I'm just going to lay my tea towel over it. I have a pretty hot iron, and I'm just going to go over those edges. Okay, so now it's time to make the strap and I'm going to do a cross body and I have a tape measure just sort of over my body like a cross body strap would be. And I'm 5'4 and I like my straps typically shorter than most people. I feel like I can't reach in the bag if it's hanging too far down on my hip. So I'm just going to sort of measure here and see what feels good. I um, So I think I want mine at like 43 inches. So I'm going to add an inch for seam allowance, half an inch on each side, and make that 44 inches cut my strap will be. Now, I've made them all different sizes. A typical crossbody strap was between like 49 and 52. I've made one, I think, almost 70 inches, and that was for a plus size person that was really tall, wanted it really setting low. So, and at this point, you could just do a shoulder strap. I don't know, a long shoulder strap, maybe 30 inches, but customize it how you want and have the strap exactly as you want. Okay, for the strap, I want my strap 44 inches cut, so, I went back to that wedding blanket and I cut a piece 44 inches long. Now I want my strap to be three inches wide, approximately. Now with this thick sort of tapestry, I don't have much of a choice the way I make a strap to go much smaller or I wouldn't be able to turn it inside out and you'll see what I mean. But I like a nice wide strap. I think it's cool looking and very comfortable, especially in velvet. So to make a three inch strap, I cut this six and a half inches because I'm going to have to fold it over. Okay, 
So six and a half inches by 44. And what I do is I turn it right side up and I have a piece of cord here. Now, I've we use this to pull it inside out. So you want something durable. Now this cord I've used quite a bit and it works very well. Um, I've tried yarn, don't do that, it breaks. And nothing more frustrating than getting to the point where you are and it breaks and you kind of have to seam rip it and start all over. So I am going to make sure my cord extends past the fabric. Now I'm a little extreme. I went six inches. You don't have to go quite that far, but you want enough to grab onto. And then I had it extend past this end as well. So now what I do, okay, let me go grab my pins. Okay, now my pins. <laughs> now all I'm going to do with this facing up, I'm going to put right sides together, just basically fold it in half and line up the edge and I'm going to pin all the way down just making sure this cord stays kind of tucked down here in the fold. So that's easy. You just pin all the way down. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just a quick note. So if you don't have a piece 44 inches long, and I oftentimes did not. Um, I just pieced some fabrics together and then sometimes it's fun just to do mix, mismatched pieces of fabric. You know, you'll have some seams in your strap, but you can create kind of a long strap. Just piece some pieces together. Okay, so now that I have this all pinned, I need to sew it. I have my little cord sticking out of the ends and what I'll do basically is sew across the top and down the side and leaving the bottom open. So I'll use a good quarter inch seam allowance and I'll go across the top. Now it has this cord sitting in the little nook here. I will go over that cord about 10 times. I get kind of ridiculous with it because I do not want that to come out when I'm pulling. So I go over the cord a bunch of times, quarter inch seam allowance, I'll come here, pivot in my machine, come all the way down the side, and leave the bottom open. And I'll end right here on the side. And I will only stitch it once, not a double stitch, because there's going to be a top stitch, which will make it extra durable. So I have it all sewn. One side is sewn completely shut. The other side is open. And now I just need to turn this inside out. Now I picked probably the hardest fabric to show you. Probably will look harder than what it is. But I've learned a couple tricks doing this. If you start up here and start pushing down, you'll never get it off. So I'll push down a little bit just so I have a smaller chunk to work with. But really, to start with, the action kind of happens down at the sewn end. Well, I can clip that extra cord off now so that it's not inside my strap. And then I just sort of work this bottom over itself, basically. Okay, I need to get a good grip here. So... I start by working this over, kind of pushing it inside itself like that. And then I will just start a little bit at a time, working that over itself. Now I have some of the velvet coming through and that's easier to grasp than a cord. So that's kind of nice. And I just keep working it down. I'm 
Now this is what I have. I still have this cord attached to one end and I am going to cut that off now. And I have this corner kind of puckered in there. I usually take just like a pin and pull that out. And this may seem strange, but so this end is still open and this end is closed. Now we have a seam inside of there and I want to cut that off because I don't want to, I have enough thick stuff to sew over on my purse. I don't want to have to sew over that as well. So I'm just cutting that thick seam off. And yeah, you it might start to unravel here since I don't have any back stitching now since I cut that, but it usually doesn't. I'm not going to be handling it that much to where it will start to unravel. So now I need to take it to my ironing board. Now here's the seam. I like to have my seams on the, at the edge, so I'm putting it on the edge here and what I'll do at my ironing board is just kind of work that seam and press it as I go so that it's flatter and more tidy. Okay, so I have my seam on the side and I tested this fabric, it's heat tolerant, so I'm not going to cover this one with a tea towel, you certainly can, but just going to give it a good press. Now that I have it all pressed, I'm going to top stitch it, which all that means is I'm going to go to my machine, I'm going to do a top stitch on each side, and it will just be a single stitch or a straight stitch, and I will line up the side of my presser foot That'll help keep a nice straight line if I can guide this next to my presser foot, which will be basically like a quarter of an inch in. And I am just going to stitch, back stitch, just go all the way down one side, about quarter of an inch, and then go down the opposite side the exact same way. That just makes it look more professional. So what I typically do is this is the side that you'll see mostly when I attach it to the purse. I want this on the outside because of all the flowers. And I put it in my machine, usually facing me because that's the most important part to get them nice and straight. So take your time and get nice straight lines. I'm just using gold thread and you'll want to match as closely as you can the color of your strap. Now I need to attach my strap to the bag. Now I have to choose what side of the strap I like the best. Now this one has like flowers on one side and the opposite side just kind of looks like a little design like that. Well I want the flowers on the outside so what I need to do is open up my flap and open up my purse here. Now, there are side seams where we sew this together. I want to go to one of the side seams and I want to take my strap, the right side against the right side of the purse and I'll line up. Now, I can just eyeball the center of this. I don't need to measure, but I want the center of the strap lined up on that side seam and it's usually too thick there to put a pin right on the seam so I typically put one pin on each side of that seam and then I will pin the edges so I have my strap laying down next to the purse, the right side touching the right side of the purse, and the very top, the strap lined up with the very top of the purse, and pin that. 
And then I'll go to the other side. Let me get that pinned. Okay. Now, I'll just make sure my strap isn't going to be twisted. I need to go to the opposite side seam. And so, I just make sure my strap isn't twisted. Bring it over and then lay the right side down on the seam. There's a lot of pattern here. It might be kind of hard for you to see clearly, but basically we're just laying right sides together. And same here. And I'll get this pin just like I did the other side of the strap. Okay, so now I have both sides pinned I want to go to my machine and let's say start with this one. I want to put, now that I'll show you at the machine, but you want to take that front plate off and slide this in and I'll start, here's the edge of the strap. I'll start about half an inch outside that strap, go forward back and just go over that strap with the straight seam until I come off of it into the purse a little bit and then I'll take it out, clip a thread, and I'll go back. If this was a real skinny strap, you could just hit back and just kind of go back and forth that way. But since this is so wide, I'll take it out and start over. And I'll go over that about five times. I want that super durable. And then I'll do it to the opposite side. Okay, so I'm going to remove this front plate so I can easily slide my bag in over this arm here. And so I'll slide it in close to where that strap is. Now I'm just a little bit outside of that strap here. So I'll slide it under my presser foot, set my presser foot down and I will do about a quarter inch seam allowance, basically just lining my top of my bag against the side of my presser foot. And I will go forward and back and just go over that strap, pulling pins out as I go. going to pull mine out, clip these threads, and start back over. Okay. Strap carries a lot of weight. It's kind of a critical area. Okay, I'll do that. I'll go over this one. That's two and at least three more times. Okay. So now I have this strap sewn to the sides. I'm going to flip this over just so you can see. There's the strap. I'm going to pull it up. And now we have the strap attached. Now for the lining. Okay, so now I can just set my bag aside for a little bit. Um, you know, the strap may be a little over scale for this bag but you make yours any size you want. So now I'm going to grab fabric and patterns for my lining. I want this tapestry sort of tablecloth as my lining fabric, and I want the darker side to be the right side. So I'm going to flip it over and mark on the back side, which is actually supposed to be the front. <laughs> Very pretty, but I need the dark side for my purse. So anyway, what I need to do is take my pattern that we made the bag with and lay it down and I need to trace two of these, okay? Now I'm going to bring you in closer because most lining instructions that you would see, they just have you trace exactly around this as it is. Now I do it a little bit different just from trial and error if I go out a quarter of an inch and just kind of taper it back down and line it up with the bottom and bring it back out sort of quarter of an inch. 
it fits in my bag so much better. So I'll bring you in closer so you can watch me trace it. I want to tell you too, you can have a lot of fun with your lining um, for your purses. I've done like chickens and frogs and Betty Boop lining. Um, it's kind of a nice surprise to look in there and see something whimsical and fun. Now I am going to just trace straight across the top as it is. Get my hand out of the way. Okay. And partially on the bottom. That'll be traced exactly how it is. But up along the sides, and I won't measure this, I'll just eyeball about quarter of an inch. It's most important that it's quarter of an inch up here. So the way you taper it down isn't that big of a deal. So I just kind of blend it into that solid line that butted up right against the pattern. Now I'm just going to go about quarter of an inch along here to that top line. Now you can trace it exactly. It starts to pucker at the top if it's the exact size of the pattern. And then you get some puckering when you're sewing it. And I find that this is the best way to have a nice clean top, even though it's a little bit of an extra step, but I think it's worth talking about. So I'll go ahead and get this one traced out and then I have a pattern. I want to make two pockets. Now this is a rectangle and it's six and a half across and seven and a half tall. Now I want my, maybe I'll come back when I do the pockets because I want the dark to be my lining, but I want the light color to be my pockets. And I'll show you that, but let me get this traced out and then cut out and I'll come back. Now I have my two sides of the lining cut out and I'm going to go back to this tablecloth and I am going to trace this rectangle two times as well. Now this I'll just trace exactly as it is. I'll trace two of them and then cut them out. Okay, so this is what I have cut out. And this is sort of how it will look inside the bag. I'm going to put my pocket pieces aside for right now because I want to add a closure and I like to use magnetic snaps. And they are just snaps that sort of have an innie and an outie and they are magnetic and they go together. You kind of have to pull them pretty good apart. So. These are kind of easy to use. It's a big reason why I like them and they hold the bag together nice. So I have this kit that I got from Amazon and I'll put a link in my description. Now, if you're just making one purse, I think there's 66 sets in here. Um, these are 14 millimeter. If you want to look on your own or maybe your craft store has some, but if you don't want a big set like this, I like using the 14 millimeter. They're bigger than, well, they're a nice size. Not too big, not too small. And so basically what a set consists of, now that has silver, shiny gold, and a bronzy gold. I'm going to use the bronzy color. And it comes with that any and Audi, and they have these little tabs on the back. And then they come with these two, or yeah, two little flat pieces, kind of have a line and a, two lines and a center in the middle. Okay, so I will show you how I measure for the snaps. Okay, how I start measuring for these snaps is, okay, I'm going to start with this little metal piece and that's what I'm going to use sort of as my gauge here. And I sort of set my metal piece down approximately where I'll want it. Why not start close, right? So there's this little tiny circle, well, little circle in the middle there. 
I want that circle to be one and a half inches down from the very top of my bag right here. So it's one and a half inches to that. And then I will measure it this way and find the center. And I pre-measured and marked this and that's the center. So you want it to be centered this way and you want it to be one and a half inches down. And once I get that where I want it, I will carefully sort of hold that down and I'll mark on those two little slits on the side. And then I will do it to the other piece of lining the exact same way. Now that I have my two lining pieces marked, I want to take two little durable pieces of fabric. I like to use denim a lot or a nice piece of task tapestry, something that's durable. And I am going to lay this in the center. Now, this doesn't need to be measured or anything. Just get it close and mark those two lines. Now, this is just going to make the snap extra durable. Just a little bit of a backing here. Okay, now I have my two lining pieces marked and these two pieces marked. What I want to do is cut those little slits. Now, how I'm showing you on this is exactly how I'll do it on the lining, but I'm going to show you on this because it's a little easier to see without all that pattern. So I'll just sort of fold this down and I will make the teeniest, tiniest little slit. It only has to be big enough for these tabs to go through. And I like them smaller than this because you can't go back. Once you make them too big, then the snaps aren't secure. You can always push that tab through, but you can't make that hole smaller. So I'm just making a teeny tiny little snip. And I will do that to this one and both the lining pieces where we marked. Okay, so now what I want to do is pick a side, either the any or the Audi, it doesn't really matter which goes where. And I think I'll just choose this one. It has those little tabs on the back. And I'm just going to slip it through. This is the right side, the front side of my lining. I'm going to push it through those little holes we snipped. And now those tabs are on the back side. And now I'm going to take that little piece of denim that we snipped and I'm going to set that right over top of those tabs. And then I'm going to take that little plate and put that over top of the tabs. And now here I usually have leak. I like this little tool because it has that rubbery handle and I use that to push my tabs down. Now I push my tabs out. Some people push them in. I don't think it really matters. And then I kind of tap them down. So I'm going to shake the camera here. Kind of get them. Nice and secure. Okay. So that's what it looks like on the back. And we have a perfect little snap on the front. Now I just have to do that exact same thing to this piece of lining with the opposite snap. Now my snaps are on and I'm just going to set this aside for a minute and I'm going to take you to my ironing board and work on these pockets. Okay, so I want the light side to be the right side of my pocket. Now I already finished this one and it's all ready to go onto the bag and I'll show you what I did. So I just take my pocket and I'm going to turn it over to the wrong side. And I am going to fold the side in half an inch and give it a real good press. Now you can measure these if you want. I never have. <laughs> I just get pretty close. This, I don't think this has to be perfect, perfect. Okay. So I have the two sides. 
So the seven and a half is, so it'll sit. The pattern is seven and a half by six and a half. I'm doing it the long way, okay? So then I take the bottom and I fold it up half an inch and give it a good press after I've done the sides. And then, this takes a little longer because now you're going over a fold. You have to hold that a little bit longer. Now the very top, I want to be finished. Now these are kind of raw edges on the sides and the bottom, but the top, I don't want a raw edge on the inside. I want it to be nice and clean. So I'm going to fold this over a little bit over a quarter of an inch. Give that a good press. And then I'm just going to fold it over again. Ooh, it's hot. And just hold that down for a bit. I just wanted to hold its shape while I take it to the machine and sew it. And so I won't sew anything except the very top here. I won't sew the sides because I'll do that once it's attached to the, that's how I'll attach it to the lining. But this, the top won't be sewn to the lining, so I want to finish it now. And what I'll do is just go to my machine, I'll line the very side up with the side of my presser foot, and just do a simple straight stitch right across, just to hold that down. See, this one's all sewn already. Now I just want to sew the pockets to each side of the lining and this one I already have pinned on and ready to sew and I'll show you what I did here. So I'm taking the top that we finished, the nice edge, and just kind of laying it down here and I am going to just eyeball centering it. I use this as my guide and I just kind of center it on that snap. And then what I do, I do measure, I want this to be level and they can really shift around in the machine. So I pin this pretty good and I measure it. So from the very top to this very top of the pocket, I measured two and a half inches. Okay, now I'm going to pin that. And then I'm coming to the other side and I'm going to measure, I know my arm's probably in the way, but I gotta get this accurate. <laughs> I measured two and a half down here and stick a pin. Okay. And now the rest is easy to pin. Once I have these the same distance from the top, I will just stick a pin in each corner down here. And then I'll stick a pin here, here, and here. And now what I'll do on both sides of the lining is I'll take it to my machine and I will start stitching just a little bit off the pocket, come down into the pocket, back stitch, and stay as close to the edge as I can up to the side. Of course, don't sew across the top or you won't have a pocket. And I would imagine my seam allowance is about eighth of an inch. I don't want to lose pocket space, so I try to make a nice straight line close to the edge all the way around and I will do it twice. I will double stitch it for durability on both sides. So I'll go do that now. Now I have the two sides complete. 
And what I want to do now is sew these two together. And I'll put right sides together, just like this. And a lot of times that snap will snap in place. Okay. And I just need to do some pinning. And I will pin and sew from this corner down to about here on both sides because I need an opening here in order to insert it into the bag, which is actually over top of the bag first. So I need it to keep it opening at the bottom. And of course we want the top open. So I'm only going to stitch here. Let me put a couple pins in. I always start at the upper corners because those are most important that they line up. And now I'm going to stick a pin to show you where I'll stop. I'll stop right about here because I want a nice big space open here. So I'll continue pinning between these two pins and come around and do it on this side. Okay, I don't know if you can see, I have both sides pinned and all I'll do, you know, I when I say double stitching, that just means go over it twice. That's what I mean when I say double stitching, that how we go over it twice for durability. So I will double stitch this from this pin to this, come over here and do the same thing. Now because this is curved, just like all the other curves, we have to make our little snips so that it lays nicely. Just where you stitched. You don't have to do anything down here. And now I'm going to turn it inside out for a minute. Then I have to turn it back. So I'm turning it right side out actually right now just to press it. And then I'll have to turn it inside out again to attach it to the bag but I want everything to be crisp and clean, so I'm going to just go to my iron and press these seams that I just sewed. Now it's time to finish up the bag by putting the lining in. Okay, so this is my right side, so I need to turn this back inside out. Okay, then I need to grab my purse. All right, now to get this prepped for the lining, I need to take this flap and flip it back behind the bag I just want this opening free and clear of everything. So the lining has to go back. These straps have to rest nicely along the sides. Just kind of straighten them out so we have a nice clear opening for the lining. Now, the lining starts off going outside the bag. And so it's inside out and I will put the bottom in so okay so here's the lining there's my snaps i will take the bottom and put it over top of the bag then i'll reach in here kind of grab my bag and fit that lining over top so here's the top of my bag poking through now i want this all lined up nicely i want the top of the bag to line up nicely with the top of the lining. Okay, this just takes a little finesse. You just kind of get it all lined up. Now, in order for, I'm going to pin and sew all of this, but in order to make sure those snaps line up perfectly on the inside, you have to take the outside seam of your lining and the inside seam you have to kind of just eyeball this but the inside seam of your purse and you want those to line up 
okay? So I have that lined up. Now my strap is too thick to put one of my little pins through. So I'm just going to pin slightly outside the strap. I'm pinning, okay, my pins are in my sewing machine. Let me go grab. Okay, so if you can pin through your strap, you know, you want to pin on each side of that seam there. I'm going to get as close as I can without bending my pin. So I just want that secure. I'll stick another pin over here. Okay, so once I have that side done, I'm going to go to the opposite side, find the seam on the other side of the lining, the seam on the inside of the bag, and I'm going to line those up and stick a few pins in there so it doesn't shift around on me. Okay, now the critical part is done. Now we just need to pin along the top. Just kind of play with it. Make sure everything's nice and lined up at the top and pin all the way around. Okay, now I have everything pinned and I'm going to go to my machine and stitch around it. Now I'll remove that front plate, slide this over the arm. I usually like to start in the back. And my goal will be a quarter inch seam allowance. Sometimes these have a mind of their own and you have to go a little bigger, but um, my goal is a quarter of an inch. So I'll take you to my machine. Now I'm just removing my front plate and I'm going to slide my bag over this arm. And I'm going to line the edge pretty close to the presser foot. And I'm just going to stitch, back stitch, go all the way around. And then when I'm done, I'll do it again for durability. And when you get to the straps, if they're really thick and you're struggling, you may have to use that hand crank on the side Go nice and slow here. Um, you know, I have a denim needle. Sometimes this, this takes a little finesse to get over those straps and things like that, but it's doable as long as you don't have super thick stuff in there. Now I have the top all sewn. And I'm just going to do a little trimming so I don't have a lot of bulk here at the top. You know, if I went over a quarter of an inch, I'll trim it down to about quarter of an inch. I don't want all that bulk when I turn it inside out. Okay, so this next step I usually do when I'm sitting right at the machine after I sew this I pull that lining up like this and see we still have it open at the bottom and we just need to close that up and I may well my pins are at my sewing machine I I don't pin this but I've made tons but what I want to do is Tuck these in the bottom, each side, about half an inch. Stick my needle in, in my machine, and sew. And I will just sort of close that up, folding in half an inch as I go, sewing as I fold. Now, you can pin this if you want. You know, maybe if you're not comfortable, maybe if it's your first time. Let me get my pins.
Sorry about that. I used to have a bowl of pins sitting by my machine and over here, but they just kept getting knocked off my table and I don't leave them sitting there. So you can just fold those in half an inch and pin all along there if you like. Okay. Now I just need to sew this and I'll start about right here outside of that hole. Stitch, back stitch, and just sew less than quarter of an inch because this will be seen. It's sort of a top stitch. So as close to the edge as you can get it all the way around until it's all closed up. So now I have the bottom all stitched shut and I can put the lining inside the bag. And just kind of shove it in there. And then just take some time here to make sure the lining fills the bag, the sides. Okay, so now all I have to do is go to my ironing board and give this a good press. And what I like to do is instead of, okay, so there's a seam right here. Instead of lining that up perfectly at the top, I tuck the lining in a little bit, maybe half an inch, so that this outside fabric over comes over the bag. That way you don't see the lining. Now, a lot of times I will do a top stitch. I let the bag sort of dictate whether I do that or not. Sometimes the bags are so kind of elaborate that a top stitch might almost look messier than if I don't do it. You know, that gives a nice professional look if you think you can get it nice and straight. Now, when I have this type of fabric and all this thickness, I think this would be better off without a top stitch, but I'm just going to give it a good press. Now pressing this takes a little bit of time, a little bit of finesse. I just open it up. Now, wherever I have like bullion and stuff, I'll cover this little area with a tea towel because I don't know how that will react to heat and probably not very good. So I'll just lay a tea towel in there, give it a good press. You know, as far as top stitching, all that basically is, is once you have it nice and pressed, you put it back in your machine and about half an inch down, you go all the way around. And I have other purse tutorials where I do top stitch. And like I said, I'll try to link as many of my purse videos in my description here as I can. So you just need to turn it then. Now I'm on the strap side, get everything pushed down and ready to press like that all the way around so this takes just a little bit it's important to press this so just take your time with it and I'm always this part I'm happy to do this because this means I am done so I'll just go around and keep pressing so now when I'm done pressing all around the perimeter I like to lay this out, put my flat down, put my straps on the edge where they're going to be. Now these are really wide, so I sort of fold them in half just where the purse would naturally be. And I put a towel over top and I just press this whole area right here. That way it helps the flap lay nice. It helps those straps not be so stiff and thick that they kind of open those sides. So I kind of press them down and in half. So I'll just put a tea towel right here and just press over that whole area.
Okay. All done. Super comfy, beautiful movement. I just love it. Here's what the back looks like. Snap, the lining. I don't know if you can see that. Pockets, beautiful, beautiful. Now I know a lot of you are making, using my tutorials and making some purses. I'd love to hear from you. How's it going? All right. Thank you so, so much for watching.